Yo, what is up, Cracks and Clown members, Inferno League fans who have come here to join me for week two of the Inferno League season one. Our opponent today is Mudkip Fan. Uh, he is one of the new uh, recruits to the Inferno League. Well, actually, one of the new people in the Discord as well. Uh, I think he was the last one to join, actually, now that I think about it, uh, before we finish the draft and all that stuff. Um, so he was the last one to join. He still picked a very powerful team. Uh, you know, the fact that he had a fucking Roaring Moon, Lamora, and Golden Go. What? So just like last week, I'm going to be giving you guys a kind of like a play-by-play, -play, uh, kind of like our mindset going into the battle and some of the plays I did uh, in this match uh, so that you guys have like my, uh, basically what I was thinking throughout the whole match. Um, I'll give you guys the sets I have before we start so that way you guys know. Um, so these are my six mods for, for today. Uh, we have the Hisu and Gudra, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, Screamtail, Iron Tread, Registeel, and Garganacle. Now, as you can clearly see, I have a very, 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 very bad weakness to ground. Uh, as my boy Zillix pointed out in the uh, week one review slash uh, week two preview slash draft analysis said that we did live uh, a couple days ago. So if you guys are interested in that, you can also join us again this week. Uh, when we do the uh, week two review slash week three uh, discussion. To talk about this match, it's very evident that I have a really, really big ground week. My entire team, like most of my moms are weak to ground. So obviously we were very afraid of the Rory Moon, the Glamora, and uh, there was something else. I'm trying to remember what it was in the, in the testing that Zen and I did. Um, and obviously, Gly well, Gligar is not really that strong, so we're not really worried about its, you know, ground coverage. But it's still it's still a nuisance, right? So most of our game plan was trying to how do I put this in the easiest ways and the the small the, the smartest terms is make sure that the Roy Moon doesn't get ahead of itself, right? Because Roy Moon is a fucking powerhouse, a fucking monster. And we had a couple ideas for it, so. Starting off with the Hisu and Gudra, this thing was EV'd to the point where I would tank an Earthquake, even at plus one, from Roaring Moon, and basically Oko it with a Draco Meteor, should it come to that, uh, as long as the Roaring Moon had some prior chip damage to it. Ogre Pond is my first hazard setter. It's, it's literally here to set up spikes as much as possible. I can sweep with it, because I EV'd it to where I have Trailblaze, right? So I don't have the fancy grass type moves, you know, because we don't really need it for this one, but I had Trailblaze and essentially I EV'd it to where I outsped everything at plus one, um, barring like a Choice Scarf Roaring Moon. That's the only thing I wasn't gonna outspeed. And I think a Choice Scarf Aza was the other thing that he had. Um, so outside of that, I would have outsped everything. So I only needed one Trailblaze to outspeed everything. Now, outside of that, it had the typical Ivy Cudgel and Play Rough to basically Oko the remove. Um, Screamtail is supposed to be my, my wish support. So because I have a lot of tanky mons, um, I try to gotta make sure that I keep them alive. So I have wish on it. Dazzling Gleam basically, um, with some chip on the Roaring Moon, Oko's the Roaring Moon um, with the EVs that I have. Um, and I have Flamethrower, which does, I think it was like 30% to Golden Glow. So anytime Golden Glow switches in, if my screen tells out, I can just Flamethrower and do like some chip to it. So that's why that's there. Um, and I have enough defense EVs to also tank the Roar Moon. Like I said, my biggest my biggest concern was the Roar Moon. I also have Reflect on this on, on screen tail, because that way I can make sure that all the physical attackers were neutered a little bit. Um, and go from there. Now, my biggest offensive threat, but outside of Order Pond, was my treads. I had a scarf treads, which literally outsped every single mon, um, except for a scarf Azov, I think, and a scarf Roaring Again, those are like the, the fastest mons on his team, so that's why I didn't have too much of, a, of an issue when it came to um, EVing my mons. But uh, treads didn't have max speed, but it had enough. To where I outsped everything, barring the Roaring Moon and the Azo. Actually, I think I might have outsped Azo. I don't remember. No, 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 I don't. Actually, I think I'm a little bit up, a little bit below. But basically, everything else I outsped. Um, and I had Terra Ice just so I can literally do a late game sweep 
um, on the Roaring Moon and Thunderous if he brought it and any other um, Ice Weak Bonds that he had the ability to have. I also had Earth Power on it in case I was forced to go into Treads uh, on a potential Glamora. Um, that way I didn't spread the Toxic Debris which I, I realistically speaking didn't bother me too much. It doesn't affect anybody except for... Um, well, actually, it affected Ogre Pond and Screamtail, but Screamtail doesn't really bother with, like, one layer of, of, of uh, Toxic Spikes. Uh, and Ogre Pond is supposed to be just offensive anyways. But, like, Garganical doesn't care about, you know, poison because it can't get poison because of its ability. And then I, the rest of them are steel types, so I don't fucking care about it. But, um, it's still there just in case I needed to do that. Plus, I would, I'm, I'm faster than a Scarf Glamora as well. So, if he predicted my switch in... And goes for earth power then i oko it back afterwards with my own earth power um and then outside of that registeel was supposed to be another this one's a special tank mainly for uh the golden go and the thunderous um he was he was uh tear ground on thunderous so i still would have been taking some damage but i would have been able to handle it uh and then finally my stealth rocker with garganical um who is Literally, like I said, I just needed hazards at, at all points in this match, so which is why having fucking three steel types is really good against the only hazard removal being Mortal Spin Glamora, because you can't Mortal Spin because it, it won't work. Uh, outside of that, uh, I'm also specially tanking to deal with the uh, potential Golden Go and Thunderous and Azov. So just a couple things here and there that I had. Uh, to try to deal with this stuff and I did have um, I think Terra Fairy on Garganical to deal with the Roaring Moon in case it got a little dicey um, and I think pretty much all of them had a defensive Terra except for uh, Screamtail because I wasn't planning on Terra Screamtail at all but like like Gudra I know had Terra flying so if in case I wanted to predict an earthquake then I could just do that and Oko the fucking uh, Roaring Moon um, obviously Ogre Pond can't have a different Terra except for water because that's, the, that's how it works. Um, and then Registeel had Grass to again deal with the fucking um, Earthquake weaknesses that I have. So without further ado, let's get ahead and go on with this battle. Now, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the video, my main goal in this battle to at least ho help me guarantee a win is Hazard stacking up the ass. So what do I do? I lead with Ogre Pond. Um, to try to get up those spikes as soon as possible because uh, like I said if I get spikes up then I'm good because at that point um, I'm able to put pressure immediately um, because he's either gonna be forced into going into Glamora to get rid of spikes or go from there my initial thought was that he was gonna lead Glamora and even if it did then I had a game plan for it and if he brought a elf which I thought he was going to um, then I would have switched out to gain some kind of, a, of an advantage. Um, but because he led Roaring Moon, I don't want to risk it, okay? I don't want to lose my Ogre Pond this early in the match because it's a very crucial mod for me. I need to get the spikes up, so I'm not going to risk it. So what I end up doing is I switch it to, Roaring, uh, to Screamtail, which can tank any hit that Roaring Moon can go for. Um, but, and he goes for U-turn. Now, it does a little bit of damage. I'm still not sure, by looking at that at, at that cow, I'm still not sure if it's Bandit or Dragon Dance at this point. I know that it is not Scarf, though, um, because Scarf would have done a little bit less damage to my uh, Scream Tip. Um, unless he was Scarf Adamant, then he might have been able to do stuff. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to risk my Ogre Pond, and I'm, I'm calcing. I'm doing my calcs, you know? Um, now, Golden Go comes in. Uh, I have literally three switch instances this thing, <laughs> um, at this stage in the game. Now, he could predict me and go for the Focus Blast, which I was worried about throughout the entire match, but I don't think he used it, which means he might not have had it, or he was choiced in a way to where he probably wasn't going to risk it. So, um, I am going to switch into my Hisu and Gudra, which can tank any hit that the Golden Goal could potentially go for because of how specially tanky I am. Um, looking at that damage, again... It's not specs, okay? I know for a fact at this point it's not specs because it would have done a little bit more to my Gudra because I'm more physically defensive oriented on this set um, than I am specially oriented. Uh, so I know it's not specs. It could potentially be Scarf, 
but I don't know yet. Um, and it could just be like a bulky, uh, whatchamacallit, a bulky nasty plot set, but I don't know at this stage in the game. I don't know yet. So what do I do here? Um, I am gonna not over predict. I'm gonna go for the fire blast. Uh, he does switch into the thunderous there. <laughs> the thunder is here. Um, now, this was upsetting, okay? Because had that hit, had that fucking move hit, this would have made the battle a lot smoother for me um, because of the fact that I would have been able to deal with this a lot easier and not have to worry about it as much in the end game. Now, because of what I've, I've been mentioning this whole time, um, the way I EV in my mods is to speed creep a lot of these things and uh, Thunderous T was one of the ones that was trying to speed creep in a lot of wars. Um, now granted, um, there was a possibility of it being Scarf, but if it's Scarf it's not going to be doing as much damage so this is where I do like the gauging game again. So this is what I do. I know that he can't kill me with anything at this point. Even if he goes for Terra Ground. Um, is not gonna is not gonna kill me. It's not gonna do enough. Um, and looking at this damage, I can clearly tell it's more than likely Scarf. So this is where it's set up. Now, I said I'm not messing with nothing. I have, I see nothing in here that can take an Ice Beam except for Golden Go. But I know you're not gonna switch into it just because of the fact that I just used a Fire Move. So he both switches out. I go. For, I see the Gligar. My Ice Beam almost fucking kills it. Now at this point. Because of I'm looking at the HP stat, this is more of a specially defensive Gligar than it is physically bulky. Because if it had been uh, physically, he would have died in one hit. From my calc, again, I'm doing calc. Um, Ice Beam is going to oak kill this thing. I'm not going to kill this thing though. Okay, why? Because I need to get my hazards up. I've been saying this this whole time. So what do I do? I know that he's probably going to go for Earthquake or set up some rocks or something like that. I'm switching into my Ogre Pond. Oh, no, actually, that's a lie. Whoa, I think I made a mistake. No, 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 no. No, this, this makes sense. This makes sense. Okay, this is what happened. Okay, I remember what I did. <laughs> I have to catch myself to remember what the fuck I was thinking. Okay, now I remember. I remember. I remember. Okay, so essentially what happened here was I had to cow. Okay, I could have brought an Ogre Pond and set up my spikes. That I could have done. However, I figured that Stealth Rocks might be more important at this point because we already know that the Thunderous is potentially Scarf uh, and Roaring Moon, while we still don't know, is still a little iffy. Um, if it's not Heavy Duty Boots, then having Spikes up, uh, well, beneficial, I think would be better for me to have Rocks up first. So um, I did calc it and even though I'm not as defensive as, I, as any other regular Garganico normally is. Because um, like I said, I'm more on the special defensive side of things for this this matchup. Um, it's a fucking Gligar, <laughs> okay? So um, it is it is gonna hit me a little bit harder though. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it did it did stung me a little bit, but I knew I could live too, um, as long as I didn't get crit, obviously. Um, but I knew I was gonna be able to switch in and safely put on my rocks and go from there. So I do just that. I tank the hit coming in. Uh, like I said, I have the leftovers, which helps me out. Um, I tank the second hit. Uh, it was a little close, but we got the rocks up. That's what matters. Now, now that the rocks are up, I can switch into Ogre Pond to do the same thing with my spikes, right? So it goes for the Earthquake. doesn't do that much. Um, I set up my first layer. goes for the dual wing beat. Now, this was crucial. Okay, this was a crucial pivotal moment in the battle and where I decided how I wanted to play this game. Okay, at this point, I have one layer of spikes and stealth rocks on the opposing side of the field. Um, as I've read and, and, and heard throughout, you know, the history of competitive, a second layer of spikes isn't the greatest thing in the world. Okay. Um, Usually you want to make sure you guarantee the third layer um, Otherwise, there's no point right so I could go for the second layer of spikes and be without my ogre pond Right, I could do that. That's the thing however Okay, I'm trying to get those spikes up as fast as possible and there is switching that I can make 
to have that happen. So, what do I do here? Um, I'm not gonna set up spikes. I think if I, if I'm trying to remember, I either kill this, this, this uh, Gligar right now with the Trailblaze, or I switch into um, my Screamtail. I'm pretty sure it was the former, and I do kill this Gligar here, um, but I, I, I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure that's what I do. Um, yeah, so now I'm at plus one. I outspeed everything on the team except for a Scarf Roaring Moon, um, because I did EV to outspeed a Scarf uh, Thunder's Terrian at plus one. So we're gonna see what he switches into, and then we'll make a game plan from there. So he goes into Beginium. Now, <laughs> This is crucial, okay? I am not wasting my fucking Ogre Pond here for spikes. I can't kill this Meganium at this amount of HP, okay? It's not happening. So, what do I do? I go into my Screamtail, okay? Screamtail can tank anything that's go for And like I said, he knows that I have a ground weakness, so he put Earthquake on his fucking Meganium. Um, but that's perfectly fine. I scream tail can take anything this thing goes for. Um, I go for the wish. Do I go for the wish or yeah, I go for the wish. Now, uh, I see he took uh, hazard damage. He's not heavy duty boots, so he's gotta be choiced in some way, right? That's what we know for a fact. He's not air balloon, which is a standard that normally is used in in play to deal with a fucking tusk and all the other shit going around in OU. Um, but in this scenario, we don't know. It could potentially still be Scarfed. Um, it's not Specs, though. We know for a fact already this is not a Choice Specs Golden Go. So the, the possibilities of it being Scarfed are very, very likely. So um, I'm not sacking my Screamtail here. I know it's going to be very crucial for me in this battle, so I'm going to switch into my Registeel. Even if he goes for Focus Blast here, uh, my Registeel is going to fucking tank it like a boss because Registeel is a fucking tank. Um, and I'm gonna get wished up by my registry or by my Screamtail's wish, which is gonna be very beneficial for me. Um, so he does go for the Shadow Ball. It's not gonna do any damage. And again, this is leading me more towards a potentially scarfed Golden Go than a set of Golden Go, um, because like I said, Ogre Pond is so fast that it's forcing people to have to speed creep it or have Scarf Monsters to deal with it because of how much of a threat it is. So. I'm gonna go for the Earthquake here. He goes into Meganium. Now, why I went for Earthquake, I might as well try to hit this Golden Go in case he, he is not, you know, Scarfed and has some other berry. Um, like, uh, like, a, like a Fire Berry or um, a Dark Berry, something like that, you know? Um, so I am gonna make the switch into, or into Earthquake and then the Meganium is gonna come in and take some hazard damage. Um, so I go for the Earthquake. And I'm gonna go immediately back to my scream tail because we already saw this thing can't do anything. Now he goes for the dragon tail. I don't think this is the best move because there was no reason for him to do that. Um, because I do have a fairy type that can switch in without any issues to this fucking uh, dinosaur. Um, and this is where we play some fucking mind games here. Well, it's not really mind games. It's more like um, I'm trying to figure out what he's gonna do. I still think that his golden go is gonna come in because of what happened last turn and. I'm at high enough HP to where I don't really need to go for Wish here. And like I said, with the speed, with the EVs I have right now, the possibilities of me doing close to 30% to this Golden Go is very likely. Um, so I'm going to be playing that game where I'm going to scare you into not going into a Golden Go um, as freely as you, you are. So he does go for the Earthquake. Um, like I said, I'm still having an, uh, enough time. I think I go for the Reflect here. No, no, I went for Wish. Okay, so... Now I remember this. This, this is basically the the setup to what it leads into the end of this battle. Okay, I'm gonna say it right now. This matchup right here is what ultimately decides how this match turns out. And I think he could have made some different plays here to get ahead. Um, and I don't know why he didn't do that. Um, just me, you know, thinking back on, uh, he didn't need to do this. Right, my point is he really didn't need to do what he's about to do, um, and it's because he did what he did that allowed me to gain the advantage um, in this battle. So what happens here is we're going into a screens uh, setup type of shenanigans here. 
Um, Scream Tail can tank anything this thing wants to go for. Um, I do get lucky with a burn. I don't think it's this turn, but I think it's the following turn. Um, which helps this interaction um, go a different route, you know? Um, he can't do anything to me uh, with with Earthquake with a Reflect Up, and now he's burned. Um, so this is where a little bit of the mind game comes in. I don't want this Meganium dead yet, okay? This, I'm trying to, to, to guarantee myself a way to where there's no light screen on the opposing side of the field um, without, because uh, it, could, it could be catastrophic, right? Um, or either that, or guarantee that I have a reflect up so that Roy Moon can't do his shenanigans. You know, that's, that's the, the mindset I'm going with. Now, this was a misplay on my end that I went for flamethrower. Oh no, no, I didn't go for flamethrower here. I think I went for it next turn. Um, I am trying to stall this thing out though, okay? I'm trying to stall this thing out now. Like I said, this might've been a misplay. When, when do I make the play? I know I go for flamethrower at some point, um, which puts him in like, real, oh, right here, right here. Okay, so this was risky because I could have killed him with the game him here and he still has two turns of light screen, um, which I don't want, okay? So this was very dangerous on my end. Um, but like I said, we're still playing this, this fucking tip-tap game here. Um, but I think where I make the play is this following turn because um, I go for Wish. He goes for Earthquake. I'm guaranteeing because I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to guarantee a light screen being uh, being up on his side of the field when Meganium and dies. Okay, that's what I'm thinking is what he wants to do. So I know for a fact now that light screen is going away, he's gonna set up another one. Okay, I just went for Wish on my Scream Tail. What does that do? Okay, this guarantees that my Ogre Pawn. Is gonna switch in knowing he's gonna go for the light screen. My ogre pot is gonna get back up to a decent amount of HP. And this is where the crucial thing happens, okay? I told you guys the, the screen to meganium matchup is what led to the to the rest of this game. Because now that I have a burn meganium with a reflect up, I can guarantee getting my three spikes up here. And not only that. If, and like I said, he really shouldn't have done this, okay? He really shouldn't have played this game right here. There's no reason for him to stay in, okay? None at all. In fact, he probably should have gone for Dragon Tail here. I don't know why he didn't do that. Um, because he's trying to get chip damage because I think he's really, really trying to get this light screen up. But I'm a physical attacker on the field right now. I don't care about light screen at all. So what do I do? I set up my spikes one spike that's that's two spikes on the opponent's side of the field now okay three spikes on the opposing side of the field he goes for counter and i knew at this point this was done okay i am gonna kill this meganium sure he has light screen but i'm an ogre pawn with physical moves okay so what do i do i go for trailblaze and again i outspeed everything on the opposing side of the field he goes out to Glamora. Now, he's on a balloon. That's whatever. That, that's not really the game plan. The point is, I Oko this thing with my Ivy Kojo. So I'm going to do that. You're going to die. Next, oh, he, go, he goes, he spreads his fucking touches of Brie. At this point, I don't fucking care. I'm winning this battle. He goes out to Golden Go. Okay. I think I don't Oko, or I think I have to Calc whether I kill this thing at this range. Um, I'm trying to recall if I did or not. I know that at this point, my Golga Pond is not going anywhere. Or I don't die uh, here. Um, did I Did I kill? Okay, yes. Okay, so with that amount of HP, I did kill. That, this is why I said hazards are important, okay? I needed to guarantee as much as possible to have all my hazards on the other side of the field, and I did. So what does it do? This thing is gonna die. And at this point, the game should have been over, okay? It, it, it realistically should have been over because I outspeed everything, okay? Unless he scarfed um, Moon, which I don't think he is at this point. Um, everything is that he and he dies to to play rough, okay? But the Hacks Gods gave him a chance, <laughs> okay? If they did, 
I miss my player off, okay? <laughs> and he fucking kills him with a U-turn. So now this is scary. Not really. And I'm gonna explain why. Okay? I haven't terrored anything at this point. At all. But <laughs> this is what, <laughs> this is the crucial part. Um I have the ability to win here because of one reason. And that's my scarf uh, treads with Terra Ice. Like I said, he's Terra Ground on his Thunderous. But that don't fucking matter to me because with the EV spread that I have, this thing is dead. <laughs> so this is what happens, it's a double down. Or well, it's not a double down, but he's, he's Scarf. This, this confirms it, he's not heavy dude, he's Scarf. Which my Scarf treads which is EV specifically to outspeed this thing and a, and a Scarf Lamora and a potentially Scarf Golden Go means that I can go for Terra Ice while he goes for his Terra Ground and I kill him with my Ice Spinner and because I'm Scarf and Roaring Moon is banded I win and I'm victorious and Treads is my goat, okay? Um, now, there was a possibility that it was still like some sort of setup um, Roaring Moon. There's no, um, there's still a possibility of that. So if he was Dragon Dance, he could have potentially still won depending on what moves he had. Uh, but I think that at this stage, I still would have been able to tank any one hit with my um, Hisuian Gudra because of the amount of HP I still had. And Reggie still is at max HP. Um, and Scream Tails at max HP, so he still wouldn't have won. He could have killed my treads, right? If he, but um, actually no, because even if he DDs right here, I still win, right? Um, if he had been Scarf, then that's a whole other fucking issue. But we don't we don't talk about that. Um, but this was this was a very interesting game. Like I said, he didn't need to do the Meganium play at all. Like there was no reason for him to do that. Um, I have one special attacker with Hisu and Gudra on my fucking team. Screamtail is not offensive, right? Uh, even if you have a, like, even without a light screen, I'm, it's not like I'm gonna be doing the most amount of damage. So I, I still I still pretty much killed the Roaring Moon from the amount of HP it had with my Dazzling Gleam, but you weren't gonna kill me in one hit. <laughs> no, this is not happening. So I really don't know why he did that play um, or why he let me set up my spikes or why he went for counter I really don't know why uh, he made that Meganium play or why he he did that tussle with me and my screen tail I, I really don't understand because like I said most of my moms are physical attackers light screen wasn't as necessary like if he had gone for a flag then we had a different fucking ball game going but um, I, I don't even think I have that many special attackers on my fucking team yeah I have one notable special attacker well Hisun Gudra and, and fucking Typhlosion those are your, <laughs> my two special attackers are not, I don't, I really don't know why, you know, light screen was the play there, but whatever. Um, like I said, he definitely shouldn't have stayed in though. Like, either that or gone for Dragon Tail on my fucking Ogre Pond instead of letting me set up my three spikes and then Oko it. Or, well, not Oko it, but like kill it off with Trailblaze. Um, because that's what gave me my advantage. As long as, if I didn't have a plus one speed, I wasn't going to be outspeeding anything. Um, because the way I EV myself was to make sure that I can come in on one of his bulkier mons, like like the Gligar, like the Meganium, like the potential uh, Monferno that he could have brought, um, or Primarina, you know, any of those mons. Like it, my my point was to make sure I can get a, a Trailblaze off on one of those mons, um, and from there I basically have a chance to sweep because nothing else I'll speed me. Um, like I said, I, I'm still a salty that, but the damage was it, it's it was adamant in some way because that's how that's how much damage he would do unless he was banned, uh, which is what I was gathering at that juncture of the battle. But the point is, he fucking should have. This should have been a 6-0, Okay, that's my point. This should have been a 6-0 because at that point, <laughs> I fucking kill the the the, the, the Roaring Moon with fucking. <laughs> With play up and then fucking Thunderous T dies to Ivy Cudgel. Like, that should have been a 6-0 and I'm still salty about that. But that's besides the point, ladies and gentlemen. That's my battle for week two. 
I had a lot of fun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm a little nervous for week three because I'm facing off against Cubo, who has fucking Chi Yu's dumbass. <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it off there, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it and that you follow me along this journey. Uh, I still say good games to Mudkip uh, fan. I know that you've been watching the, the videos. So um, just know that you did, you did, you played well. I just think you misplayed with the Meganium at the end there. Um, because that basically is what led to me winning is the fact that you, you didn't switch out your Meganium. Um, and we're just, you just, you let me set up my spikes, which you shouldn't have done. Um, like you could have switched out into something else and scared out my Ogre Pond. And then I, the, the game would have been completely different. Um, so I think that's the only misplay you did, um, is letting me set up my Ogre Pond, technically speaking, twice. Um, because I was able to do it with your Gligar and I was able to do it with your Megani. Um. And letting me wish pass to it as well. That I think if you had predicted me to switch in right there, and, and like if you hadn't gone for the light screen and gone for an attack, this, this match would, would have been completely different. My Ogre Pond would have been dead, which meant that like me really, really hung brain down. Um, like it's only because I knew you were gonna go for light screen because you were really afraid of, of not having it up um, that I felt safe in going to my Ogre Pond to pass the wish off, which brought it back to enough HP to where I was able to do what I did. Um, but that's besides the point. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and I will see you guys uh, for in terms of Inferno League on Thursday with week two coverage and week three previews uh, alongside my boy Zillix. Um, and I'm going to try my hardest to do Pokemon Horizons in some way, shape, or form in the next couple of days just to catch up with the series and then I can just do weekly reviews again. So that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Mr. Croxon and I will gladly see you guys in future videos.